$17 billion. Yep, you heard that right. This week, Disney stated that they are currently planning on an investment of $17 billion into Walt Disney World over the next decade. But as always, with a vague statement like this, we're left with more questions than answers. So today, let's dive in, crunch the numbers, and discuss the various possibilities up next. Hi there, Walton ears. I'm Jack, and this is DSY Newscast. And this week, Disney held their annual shareholders meeting, which was the first one since Bob Iger returned as Disney CEO back in November of 2022. And although it was relatively light in terms of official news announcements, besides that of the announcement of a live action version of Moana that's now in development, we did get a rather interesting nugget of news tucked away inside of an answer to a question about the tax concerns related relating to the dissolution of the Reedy Creek Improvement District and the ongoing media drama involving the Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the Disney Company. And in response to this question, Iger not only made it clear that Disney believes in freedom of speech and equality for all, but in talking about how much Disney has meant to the state of Florida as the state's largest taxpayer, he also stated the following. It relates to future taxes, but we're currently planning now to invest over $17 billion in Walt Disney World over the next 10 years. And those investments, we estimate, will create 13,000 new Disney jobs and thousands of other indirect jobs. And they'll also attract more people to the state and generate more taxes. Now, on the face of it, this does seem like some massive news, but there is a lot more to understand here before we can start jumping to any conclusions. And so, let's do some calculations and investigate this even further to try and work out what's really going on. As first of all, let's examine the validity of the statement, as it took place within the question and answer segment and not the pre-recorded news segment, which you might think that that would suggest that this wasn't planned and was just something mentioned in passing or plucked out of thin air. But despite it seeming like it was an off-the-cuff answer, it will have been very carefully prepared in advance to be strategically mentioned as part of an answer to a question that Disney probably expected about the Florida situation. Therefore, that's the validity part of all of this out the way, but now let's talk about the exact verbiage, as Iger specifically referenced Walt Disney World in his statement, and not Disney's Florida operations in general. And this really does matter, as if this 17 billion dollars was relating to all of Disney's activity in Florida, including their cruise line businesses operating out of Port Canaveral, or the ongoing Lake Nona initiative to move the corporate facing divisions of the business to their new business campus in Florida, then Disney would have definitely specified that separately within the answer. And also, this number of 17 billion dollars is very specific. As you see, Iger could have just said something vague like we're planning on investing billions of dollars into Florida, but instead, he decided decided to state a number. Which leads to the logical conclusion that Disney has a clear projection for why this would require a total investment of $17 billion. So this monumental investment is intended for Walt Disney World over the next decade. But now let's crunch the numbers and try and work out how this is going to be used. As investment is such a broad term, that could mean anything from capital expenditure on new Disney Park projects, to even that of the continuation of investment in operating Walt Disney World's complex infrastructure services and maintenance. But there is a way to clear up whether this $17 billion includes any operation costs and that is to find out just how much it costs to operate Walt Disney World. As in the 2022 annual report, it reportedly cost Disney $15 billion to operate all of their resorts around the world in 2022, except that of Tokyo Disney, which is owned and operated by the Oriental Land Company. And although this can't be perfectly precise because we don't have the exact cost breakdown of each resort, if you do take that $15 billion of global operation costs, then then divide it by the 10 parks that Disney does operate, and then consider that Walt Disney World accounts for 40% of that 15 billion with their four parks. It gives us a very rough approximate cost to operate Walt Disney World as being roughly around $6 billion each year. 
And so if the stated $17 billion investment was also including operating costs, then that total would be reached within three years and not the 10 year time period that Iger has stated. Which means we can logically deduce that this gargantuan amount of money is intended for capital expenditure investment at Walt Disney World. And to put this $17 billion into better context, it would be the equivalent to building 17 versions of Galaxy's Edge for that price, or 34 Pandora the World of Avatar themed lands for that amount of money. However, of course, that level of development, construction and expansion would be completely unrealistic and unnecessary. And so we come back to why is it $17 billion and how could it be spent? And well, over the past 10 years, capital expenditure in the US Disney parks has been roughly around $23 billion, which means that on average, this investment would see an increase of around $600 million to $900 million to Walt Disney World's CapEx budget each year on top of what has been spent historically in the past. Thus, this significant increase in capital expenditure is the clearest sign yet that Disney has some big plans that will likely involve refurbishing renovating, reimagining existing attractions and hotels, and the construction of brand new hotels, attractions and lands to expand Walt Disney World's capacity and footprint over the next decade. But now it's about time that we address the elephant in the room here. And that is the possibility that as part of this $17 billion, Disney could build a fifth park at Walt Disney World. As after all, Iger did state that 13,000 new Disney jobs and thousands of other indirect jobs would be created. And the reason why that stood out so much is because it would take approximately around that number of cast members to operate a new Disney theme park, which for extra context here, Epic Universe is going to need around 14,000 people to operate that park when it opens. But putting to one side the difficulty that Disney would have in hiring 13,000 new frontline cast members, considering the shortage in the frontline service sector workforce in Orlando in recent years, the cost to hire 13,000 new frontline cast members would be approximately around $550 million each year, or $5.5 billion over the entire 10 year period, which you have to imagine would come out of the $17 billion investment. Then in terms of the construction costs, Shanghai Disney Resort's total cost was $5.5 billion back in 2016. And a more recent stateside example is that Comcast is currently spending $1 billion each year on Epic Universe construction, with an expected total cost approximately being in the range of around $5 billion. So that would mean that if Disney did decide to build a fifth park using this $17 billion investment, they supposedly would still have $6.5 billion left over after accounting for frontline employee payroll and construction costs. But then we come to the other big piece of the fifth park puzzle, and that is to do with approval which you might think is not going to be possible now following the dissolution of Disney's self-governing municipality, the Reedy Creek Improvement District. But back on January the 11th, 2023, six weeks before the bill was signed to dissolve the district, there was a public meeting held by the Reedy Creek Board in which Disney was granted permission to build one additional major park and two minor parks like water parks and a 35% increase to hotel occupancy as well all in accordance with Reedy Creek's 2032 comprehensive long-term plan for land use. And without giving the whole media drama surrounding the Reedy Creek Improvement District's dissolution and giving it any more unnecessary media attention, a quick summary of the matter is because the board granted permission to Disney using a commonly used way to avoid rules against perpetuities called the Royal Lives Clause, it means that it will remain in place until 21 years after the death of the last surviving descendant of King Charles III, or until Disney has abandoned property, whichever is sooner, which is basically a legal way of saying forever. And because the Reedy Creek Board held this meeting in public in January, and the changes were reported on numerous times in local publications, this permission should withstand any sort of future legal dispute. So when it comes to the idea of Disney wanting to build a fifth park at Walt Disney World, I think that the old saying is fairly appropriate here, and that is where there's smoke, there's fire which might make you think that this surely means that Disney is planning to do so in the next 10 years. 
But it's important to remember just because they can doesn't mean they necessarily will. As in the comprehensive land use plan in 2010, they were also granted permission to build one new major park and two smaller parks, and yet nothing has happened. Therefore, you got to ask yourself, what's the real purpose behind Iger just mentioning this $17 billion investment nonchalantly in a Q&A session as part of the annual shareholders meeting? And I think that the real answer here is it all comes down to leverage. As clearly, Disney has some very big plans in the works for Walt Disney World that will involve huge investment in existing park renovations and large-scale expansions. But even the best laid plans can go astray. And so the reason why we're probably hearing about this now is more to do with Iger wanting to show his hand and dangle the prospect of this massive investment in Walt Disney World early on, as this firmly places Disney in control of the narrative once again and shows that Disney is resolute in their commitment to Walt Disney World and are in control of their own future over the next decade. And so I wish I had a more conclusive end point to this entire topic. But instead, I think the main takeaway here is that Disney has some very exciting years ahead for Walt Disney World. But now, it's over to you, Waltoners. I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions on this topic, and what would you like to see Disney do with a massive $17 billion investment into Walt Disney World over the next 10 years? And if you've enjoyed this video for today, then give this video a massive thumbs up, subscribe down below, and consider joining the official Waltoner Club over on Patreon, where there's more exclusive content. And I also want to give a special thanks to the Waltoner Gold members, and also everyone on Patreon who helps support the channel. And with all of that being said, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.